seconds remaining. Sideline of goal! Blake Winner's doing it! They're going to take it! He's going to be great down for it. A fourth with a double kill. Copy fast. Bonavoy's there. He's still alive! Wait, oh, check his line. He's got one time. He's got a second. He's he taking it off. They're all going to die. Oh, three. They're all dead. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the iLeague season number two, LAN Finals. This is your first best of three from the upper bracket. We're going to be seeing Invictus Gaming taking on MVP Phoenix. Winner will move on to the semifinals of the winner's bracket. The loser, not eliminated, but they've got the tough road. They drop down into lower bracket, round one. I'm LD of Beyond the Summit. I'm joined here today by the one and only gods. And, well, David, we're underway now. The draft has begun very early we were supposed to play lions uh the lions lgd match earlier but lions got in late to china so they'll be playing tomorrow we'll have four best of threes tomorrow it's going to be a busy day uh, but for now we will get things started two best of threes coming their way yeah it'll be a shorter day one but we get some good matches mvp ig this to me is one of the more interesting round one matches ig have been playing pretty well lately they kind of tested newbie in the grand finals of the ecl land finals and MVP Phoenix have been on the rise for a long time, I mean, for years. They've been getting more and more international experience playing at Star Ladder, then playing at IESF, and we're going to be playing at Star Ladder in January as well. But here they are, taking on some pretty uh, tough Chinese opponents. Yeah, MVP Phoenix, a team that was once considered to be not even the best in Korea, and now there's really not too much dispute about it. Occasionally challenged by Rave, but... It's a strong team, and they're going to open it up with a Tidehunter first pick. Uh, it's a pretty no, non-committal kind of opening. You you can go off lane with this hero. You can commit to a heavy team fight lineup. You can go back into a hard carry. Lots of ways to go from here. The Wisp Slark ban, though, early on from Invictus Gaming. MVP, they do like to run the, the Wisp for Rising quite a bit, and he's a fantastic support player, so... Curious to see where they go with that one. MVP mostly banning out those team fight initiators. The Bat Rider. The Brewmaster early. Brew's still pretty strong even after the, the quote unquote nerf. Yeah. He's oh, still yeah. very legit. <laughs> even with the nerf, I think this is still one of the, the kind of the best it's it's just he fits the metagame so well. It's not even about like you nerf his armor, you nerf a few small things about him, but it just fits the play style of how most so many teams are playing right now that it's just it's kind of an ideal early pick. And it doesn't really lock you into any kind of a like, okay, you're going to do a 4 protect 1. Okay, you're going to go for a push strat. Like, Brewmaster can fit into a 4 protect 1. You can go for a push strat. You can do all kinds of things with the Brewmaster. So it doesn't really reveal your draft, even if you are going to run him in the mid lane. But that's not even always the case as well. Yeah, IG going uh, a slightly different route here. They pick up the Viper, which is uh, not really a, not really showing much about the draft per se. But then they go back for the Ember Spirit for 4.30, uh, potentially, which they, they love to run this hero. He's fantastic at it, but it, it does kind of show who's going to have farm this game, and generally priorities. 4.30 likes to farm more than most Ember Spirits, I would say. Um, you see players like Moo more about the gank, the the early aggression. Yao, I've even seen him run the Ember Spirit off lane occasionally, not a lot, but uh, 4.30 definitely gets more of the farm priority, more like how RTZ normally would be played for, for EG. So... Yeah. I also want to mention, since we're just getting to the game now, that Cheesebug is playing for the team, but it's already pretty much been announced he's not a part of the IG roster anymore. There's speculation that yeah. maybe Burning will join them full-time, maybe he's just going to stand in for Star Ladder. But uh, for now, they're, they're playing with basically a, a dead man walking, which is kind of yeah. an awkward situation for him as well as for the team. I guess... I guess for the Chizbug, it's like he wants to prove himself to try get onto some of these maybe other teams to make himself uh, a candidate for TI5. But he'll be playing with them through Star Ladder 11, so he's going to be going to Kiev with them in a couple of weeks. He'll play this. He played ECL. He actually he played amazingly well in ECL. He to me was one of IG's MVP probably him and June impressed me the most with IG. Ben. I think Chuan, Lua, and Ferrari were good, but they didn't like. I mean, Ferrari 430 gets a lot of hype for his mid lane plays, but I didn't think he impressed me that much. And Chuan and Luo, same thing. Luo had some good games, he had some average games, and Chuan, same story. So I think Chizbug and June were the, the lesser known players on the team, but also by far the most kind of outstanding Five players in that tournament. So. so you would put Chizbug like, on the, the level of June in terms of performance? Because I feel like at, June clearly outperformed. At ECL, I think. Okay. Chizbug played really well during that. I think the main issue with Chizbug. They had already decided to remove him before yeah. ECL, though, right? 
Yeah, I think Chizbug has a kind of small hero pool, like his Ancient Apparition and his Skywrath Mage his are both very good. His storyline's just but... so weird, because, like, he was always, like, their backup player, like, under contract, but only played for IG at WCG each mm -hmm. year. Because it was the only <sighs> tournament where you could only play with, like, a full Chinese roster, and Chuan couldn't play, right? Yeah. But, I mean, obviously, uh, Chuan's back. He, he took a break from the team, went to the Red Bull. Land. Had a lot of fun there. Had some fun, yeah. He was here for like two weeks. He was Him and Demon were just tweeting pictures constantly. He was just together. chilling in LA, like streaming Dota and <laughs> playing and ping pong a good with Demon. Time, yeah. <laughs> Hitting up the club, maybe. Living the life. Red Bull looked after him, man. They, they know how to treat when, players When are well. we going to get the Red Bull experience? Yeah. <laughs> maybe when we become uh, on level players. <laughs> well. And the reason the Broodmother gets banned. Now, this what? is like a really common, like, fourth, fifth pick kind of yeah. like pocket, you know, FU pick where you just bust out. Oh crap, we have no wave clear, we have no AoE, we have nothing they can lane against it, and we don't split push that fast. So, they banned the Broodmother fairly early, but it's something IG does love to like Five reserve for later on in the draft. So I think that's a pretty yeah, good ban. Lua's Brood is pretty good. Uh, he had, he had, they beat, they beat uh, LGD in one of the games with it, although it was mostly June Slark, I think, kind of carrying them, but... Uh, I think it's a good ban against IG. Lua's drafting's been really good. Like at ECL, I don't I think his play was solid. It wasn't amazing, but his drafting overall was kind of what got <sighs> IG to the grand finals. Because I think IG were considered to be an underdog not only against VG Gaming but even against LGD. Bad. LGD two owed them in the winner bracket and then uh, fell to them in the lower bracket. And I think Lua's drafting was a big reason as to why IG could bounce back. So. Definitely been impressed by him as a kind of captain figure for this team, which is not really what he was known for. He kind of did a bit of that when he was playing for Rattlesnake, um, when him and Lamb were kind of like the two star players of that team. He did a really good job captaining them, so I think he's kind of filling in that role for now with IG. He definitely has like a similar level of versatility to Lamb. I would argue about the, the overall performance, but Lamb, you know, played pretty much every role. Lua's done the same, and he's done it pretty yeah. well. The Void will be banned out by MVP Phoenix now, so they remove a, a third team fight controller to go with the Bat and the Brew bans from earlier. Nope. Doom removed by IG, which, to be fair, can shut down Ember Spirit pretty hard. It's, it was changed a little while ago where Doom uh, is blocked by magic, magic block, so things like yeah. Pipe as well as the Ember Spirit Shield. Still, not being able to just Remnant out is a big problem for that hero, and... It just affects the way you play the game even more than how much damage it does or how likely you are to Ten die. You just don't remaining. take chances I'm you otherwise so would. I'm curious, why the hell would MVP Phoenix pick Crystal Maiden? Five second pick. Lion. That to me is just not a second pick hero. MVP Phoenix's turn she got to buffed pick. pretty hard, right? The Freezing Field has like a longer duration or something, and... I don't know, the there's something about the Freezing Field. Attack speeds slow for Crystal Nova from 20 to 30. The Frostbite, I think, was a big one. Yeah, the yeah, Frostbite cooldown goes from 10 in all levels to 10, 9, 8, 7, but nobody really levels up Frostbite, so... Yeah, it does I mean, mean you can against certain heroes. Late game, maybe you're more likely to get too often a fight, but you're not up against, like, right-click carries yet. Ember Spirit and Viper, like, Viper maybe is to a slight extent, but... It's a little surprising. I, I feel like this patch is so much in its infancy that I don't no. really understand it, I, and a lot of teams seem to be experimenting. We had the the YOLO random techies, pretty sure they just ran out of <laughs> pick time that game for VG, but... Yeah, it was yeah. Secret VG strats. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, like, even though that might have been an accident, like, there's mm. definitely a certain element of, this is a new patch, this is not, this is not, Reserve like, the, the mini TI that's coming up uh, in a month and a half or oh, so yeah. for Hu Mao, uh, for the, the Dota 2 Asia Championship, so maybe they're experimenting, uh, getting back into form, all these teams, but either way... We, the draft moves on now. They go for the Lion for Invictus Gaming. Now, this hero, I was listening to you in a PPD cast the other night, got a pretty big buff to the, the base damage, does a lot more in terms of right-click, so he's a much better zoner as a support, better against illusion-based heroes with the mana drain interval being reduced. We're not going to see any illusion-based heroes so far. MVP do occasionally run a Naga Siren, but it's not like a super essential pick for them by any means. Yeah. and I'd So we'll, we'll see if the Lion pick really comes into play. They... They were running Luo kind of a jungle specialist to some extent. They were running like Chuan in the safe lane farming lion. They do like him and Chizbug lane together and then run a jungler for Luo. I don't think that's going to be the case in this draft as uh, Medusa now gets picked up as well. So Medusa, Ember, Viper, all core heroes. None really off laners, but I think it's going to be dual lanes from IG. So we'll see who actually goes into that off lane. Hmm. But. The Medusa pick. Have you seen much Medusa in this yeah, patch? Yeah, China, Chinese teams love this hero. LG especially. They She didn't actually get touched in 6.83. Yeah. I feel like when 6.82 came out, she like 
Well, she got picked a lot when it was the the initial rubber band patch. Then mm -hmm. after like the rubber band was kind of slackened and reduced, remaining. she still saw occasional play, but yeah. not a ton. There Siler was, uh, loves it, and IG pick it here and there. Time. Okay. It, I think they like it because it's kind of flexible, and that can go mid, can go safe lane. They remaining. Teams like IG and LGD will drag games out and make I'll good late game decisions so they well, can actually get to a late game. I gotta say, IG have some pretty disgusting late game right now. Not really yeah. sure how MVP can test that unless they get like a an ultra farmed ogre, a really early refresher tide. But there, it feels like it's all about timings for MVP oh, yeah. right now. They can't really just out DPS IG late. QO's win range, I think, I assume he's going to be on the solo mate win range. He's going to go massive this game. This is going to be that kind of flashy pub style win range where you just look to snowball out of control and control the tempo of the game because Tide's going off lane, win range is going mid, and to we'll me see. that's the key hero. Like, we'll see it the doesn't even matter what safe lane farmer they pick. This win range, if win range doesn't out lane, well, it doesn't have to win the mid lane, but definitely has to just get runes and do a ton this game to win MVP of the game. You think we're going to see some, like, super long range, two screens away, power shots, 2600 range. That was the big buff in the yeah, last patch. Yeah. I, I think it's even, like, the and then, then like the blink shackles or the four staff shackles and just probably even just getting good farm as well. Like, you need to get win ranger as a core I just hero. keep on harkening back to that Starlighter game where uh, G played the... I think he was playing for VP at the time. And the most recent Starlighter in October, he was, like, 18-1, and one and they almost lost. Against yeah. uh, who's playing the the Pinoy team at, at Starlighter? Oh, um, Execration. Execration, yeah. yeah. Like they they almost won anyway because they had void. <laughs> they had void and some heroes that comboed well with it. But Ooh, that's a nice pick. Barely pulled it out. This will help out QO. This this helps win range of snowball. That's why I, I I don't think the carry hero they picked mattered too much because whatever safe lane farm you get is probably going to get pretty good farm because you've got. A CM Ogre, which is a fantastic support duo, it's all about wind range of snowballing, your carry is getting farmed no matter what, so getting a carry that can benefit your mid hero, like a Dro Ranger with the Aura, can actually fit quite nicely into this lineup. Yeah, we'll see. With, with, with the Drought pick, it definitely gives them a little more right click in general, but they, they only have three ranged heroes. One of them is Crystal Maiden, so I'd basically say two. After the lading stage, anyway. And, Very uh, strong groom, though. Make sure your do TV audio, do the TV audio is on, just to yeah. Let's, uh, it doesn't look like it is. Let's double check here, boys. I got a, uh, oh, it says I it's good, on. I got, I, got, I got a little PM saying. Hey. I got a little white bubble here. If you don't hear me, maybe try reconnecting to Dota TV real quick. Do apologize, folks. Prepare. That should be battle. okay. All right. Okay. With that said, we're underway now. This is MVP versus Invictus Gaming. It's a best of three. The Koreans have traveled to China. They look to do battle here for I-League Season 2. Lots of pride at stake. We get underway now. MVP on the dire side. IG on the Radiant. I MVP looking to defend their own jungle. We've got March playing the Drow Ranger. Heen on the Ogre Magi. QO will be the Wind Ranger. Forev playing the Tidehunter. Likely head to the offlane. A lot of regen pocketed for him. And that leaves Ryzen on the Crystal Maiden. Meanwhile, IG... Trying to defend their Ancients early, although they'll have a, a potential incursion brewing, as I'm going to try to fix my, my mouse real quick. Yep. Well, uh, for those of you uh, listening in, Junior's going to be on the Ember Spirit. Got Chizbug on the Lich. Mid lane, it looks like Ferrari's going mid on the Medusa. Lua's going safe lane on the Viper, and it will be Chuan on the Support Lion, heading down bottom to uh, join the Viper. So with a Lich pick, you can expect dual lanes out of IG, and... like. They didn't really have an offline with their three cores, so I'm surprised MVP didn't ban something like a Lich, because if you're running dual lanes and want to help out an unconventional offlane, a Lich is like the best offlane dual lane support there is, so... It does give IG... Well, pretty good lanes here, I would say, overall. Yeah, I mean, I've even seen that hero just roam. I remember Fly, when he used to play support for Fnatic, played a, a roaming Lich game. Ended up going like 4-0 in 5 minutes, just purely by chance. Got the runes. This was before the double rune spawn, so... You know whatever spawns is a potential kill rune, and... It can get lucky, but generally you just get your early levels, and, and look to just dominate the lane. So, MVP go defensive with the Drow, but... They have those aggressive supports. The boots on the Ogre, the smoke on Ryzen, a lot of really roam potential. And they are up against a Medusa mid. Generally, a difficult hero to gank just because she's a ranged hero, she's tanky, she sits back. She doesn't really care about the runes, can mostly just battle crow. So, not the easiest kill mid. And, well, Viper not easy either. So, we'll s they may just jungle the CM and wait until later to go yeah, for the ganks. Yeah, that's definitely the best way to do this. Get the fast level 2 on Crystal Maiden to get the aura, which both Tide and Wind Ranger get a lot of benefit from. Even someone like an Ogre. Ogre wants to zone out the offlane and will maybe just be throwing Ignites pretty 
freely, and that's where I feel getting a fast level 2 on CM is well worth it. So even if Lich and Ember Spirit get more out of the lane than they should because you're not try laning, the overall benefit is definitely there for uh, for uh, MVP. Early on, Kyo getting the, the very slight edge on 430, but just uh, trading blows. He's going to power shot. Does have good damage, especially with this Drow backing him up, and that'll be a, a slight thorn in 430's side, but with Mystic Snake, it's a pretty low cooldown nuke. You can always just spam it, get your mana back, and, and continue looking to farm. This 4F is going to take a lot of damage here. This might be first blood, actually. Chuan's going for it. He's going to impale a couple auto attacks to come through. Ooh, he salves up. Big commitment from 4F just to live. He will. But Chuan's going to clarity. He's got the boots first. He keeps on running, and deeper and deeper, he commits to this one heavily. No, no mana for another nuke of any kind, but if It'll nothing else, soon. 4F's going back to the well. Is there going to be any sort of rotation? Is Tron going to YOLO dive the tier 2? Nope, not going to happen. That's, that's value, though, for Tron. This, this is what PPD was talking about. The, the base damage change, it adds up. When you get off, like, 10, 15 auto attacks, having 7 more damage, suddenly you're looking at, like, nearly 100 plus. Yeah. I, mean, I was seeing it... Yes, well, a couple days ago with ECL when they were doing this Chuan Ch Chizbug dual lane in the safe lane, and Chuan was farming this fast blink on Lion because it just helps you last hit and farm. But seeing it here now as a s actual s true support Lion, also it looks amazing. So this new Lion, definitely something. Uh, and to look he's out one for. of the very best late game supports. Huge burst damage, incredible reliable lockdown, built in hex. Great against Illusion. And great against Illusion. A lot of, I mean, standard item on your late game carries is Manta style, so. And then your Terra Blades, whatever Illusion carries there may be, Naga Sirens, you can insta kill Illusions with. He was such a good support. Uh, he's been such a good support that even when even when he's up against a very difficult offlane, teams still pick him for the lockdown. Yep. Imagine if he's a good laning support and he's he's still the same great lockdown hero. Then he's out of control. This, this may be one of the go-to supports of the patch, but it's very early. And with that said, we do see a free farm Viper right now, a little as expected with the... The early value point and Nether Toxic getting some easy last hits under tower. They try to make a move here on 430. That's not going to happen. Verizon has hit level number two. Ooh, still, still no two. points in Crystal Nova. Kind yeah. of an early gank from him. Lich but he may find a, the Lich. Yeah, Lich is such a bad defensive support. Ember Spirit's a better kill if they can get it. It looks like June's completely out of position. He has the TP scroll, but they've got a stun to prevent it. They're going to hold the stun. June into the trees, and June is dead. See ya. Easy first blood. The first blood of 2015 goes the way of MVP. Korean Dota Rising. You still holding by your bet, my friend? No no Korean teams at TI5? Well, MVP are looking to prove me wrong, I tell you that. They've been uh, <laughs> I feel like you're well. you're really regretting that bet right now. By the way, your history with Dota bets, not so good. Oh, man. What am I, I going to have to do this time? What are you doing with your life? <laughs> Which bet am I going to have to fail my promises on for uh, 2015? <laughs> that's, the, that's the big question. Can we just muzzle you so you can't make any more dumb... <laughs> 2015 New Year's resolution. Be be true to my my promises. Hey, I, I, it happened eventually. They mid lane though. Hello, 430. What? That's yeah. Mr. Ryzen in the house. Gonna frostbite him. They'll remove the mana shield. Don't think they can get the kill here, but bottle charges. Yeah. They do have that long range power shot, so you're never as safe as you think you are. But yeah, he's he's fine for now. He'll bottle up. He will survive. And yeah, tied up bottom lane gang zone dot heavily by Lua, which is what you want to do as a Viper versus Tide. Tide can kind of match up pretty well, at least at least Leech XP against most carries, but Viper one of the better kind of zoners. And this T1 tower already dead, four and a half minutes in. No Bassy or Ring of Aquil even, that was just... A, I think they got a double creep wave with a single pull and then just said, hey, we got our Siege creep. It's kind of like the old DK Dota style of play with the, uh, the TI-14 they had where it's just like, look, you pull your creep wave, get a double wave, and then get an easy T1 tower. Yeah, and they were just very good at, like, getting the gank off to... or at least, like, threatening the gank so you don't even walk near the tower to try and defend it. So then you, you don't draw the creep aggro, you get the tower from there. And well, with that said, MVP running the Drow Ranger has the treads picked up. Wraith Band, number one complete. Yep. We'll see if there's some more. There's two and three. Don't don't you worry. <laughs> they do have a pretty decent Roche lineup. They've got the the Gush minus armor, an Ogre and Tide who can tank, and of course three ranged heroes with a Drow. So there's slight Roche potential here, but losing your tier one bottom early is not really a recipe for grabbing that. This Wind Ranger is going to love mid lane as soon as Drow hits level 6. And they're giving Drow quite a lot of solo XP. So Drow will get the, the fast marksmanship. And I think some more Wraith Bands. No, just an Observer will actually coming out. But this Wind Ranger base damage is going to be pretty sick uh, early on. And that's where Medusa will actually kind of struggle to last hit, except when using the uh, Mystic Snake. 
Man, we got some chest out Dota here from Heen. He just walks right into June. I don't care about your flame guard, my friend. I ain't afraid. Well, maybe he should be, because this is now a tri lane developing here for the Radiant Squad. Chuan has made his way in. He's got a smoke, but he doesn't need, feel a need to use. He's going to ammo in. They sentry. They quickly de ward the lane. He'll probably back off and may go for something relatively soon. Chizbug only level 4. Also, June only level 4. Fairly low level Ember Spirit at this stage, yeah. so they'll try for it, but let's Nobody. see how telegraphed it is. Oh, maybe not. Heen walking yeah. towards the river. It's not the easiest here to kill, though. I don't even know if they can get this. Get the Frost Blast. Tron has a level to impale, and yeah, June coming in from the side. This will be a kill for IG, but. He's tanky. He's not that tanky. Power shot comes through, hits on Chizbug. As QO engages, he walks into the river right next to the Flame Guard. He's got a little bit more of an enemy presence here than he expected. As 430 also joins the fray for him. Still not level 6. Tries to do what he can, but he gets brought down. And now you're Stone Gaze. Normally not a scary spell at this stage of the Wait, game, Lua but Ryzen out. getting run over. And Luo joining the fray as well. He's going to run down for him, take him out of the fight, and then delete the Drow from the Jeez. game. And over the top of it all is Mr. Justin Beaver, flying high and proud. Invictus Gaming, make it a 4-3. You get a fast tier 1 bottom tower, and Lou is so free to roam around the map. He doesn't want to really farm too aggressively near the tier 2, so he's like, great, fight breaking down, I'll TP into that. And he's got a mech at 7 minutes in as soon as uh, the Korea is freed up, so... Really good start for the IG Viper. Ferrari coming in with a nice stone gaze. I I'm kind of surprised the Lich Ember Spirit lane didn't do very well, like Drow's free farming and Ember Spirit has very little, but considering how well both mid and bottom lane are going, IG easily making up for it. Yeah, and they're holding onto their towers early, running this tri-core lineup. Two pretty hard late game heroes on the Ember, the Medusa. You wouldn't really say Ember is on its own, but when you've got someone else to do, they've got two spread damage heroes, right? So you bring everyone low, you've got a, a Lich ultimate to potentially finish off the kill, the same for the Lion. That thought is MVP will try to engage on a 4.30 mid, but once again, Chuan is there! <laughs> he will go in hard on Heen. One more auto attack. No, they miss a pilf! I think they both missed there, but one more plink does him in anyway. Another quick takedown as Invictus Gaming make it 5-3. to three. Mech is nearly complete on Luo. Chizbug about to... Well, just cracks level 5. Closing in on level 6. They're going to hold... An Invisor in here, Top Tron, and close to his own level 6, and now they let June catch up. He's hit 6, he's now yes. probably going to max out the Flame Guard. IG, everybody about to come online before the 10 minute mark. Yeah, they'll give June, uh, there's probably just some free farm for like a couple of minutes, and then say, okay, you're an Ember Spirit, you don't actually need to be a carry hero, you can come fight. And even Ferrara and Medusa, known for kind of being that late game turtle hero, this hero can fight early on with level 4 Mystic Snake, with a fast Phase Boots Aqua, this hero can actually match up very well against the MVP lineup. Have they been stacking Ancients? No, no Ancient stacks yet, no Big Camp stacks. They do have two heroes that can just decimate these, no. but... Cure mid, got, took a lot of damage. This is, this is kind of the concern when you run the Wind Ranger mid, right? Like, if you don't dominate the lane, what does that hero bring to the table compared yeah. to anything else? Well, we'll talk about it later as March tries to engage a little, but he gets impaled again! Chuan's there! Gets the kill, he's got a Finger of Death ready. They might try to turn this one, not with Lua, but if a plus one comes through, he's low. <laughs> He's still alive for now. He doesn't have mana for the mech, though. They managed to get the Ravage off. They get the kill. Chuan turning with the Impale. Now he's mana training, but it's only a level one mana drain. Not too scary. June, however, is quite a bit more fearsome. Engages. He's going to continue chasing onward. I think he sleight of fisted there, so he ended up not connecting on the stun. And June gets another kill, a double for him, walking out of range of Ryzen, but gets clipped by QO. From the backside, he comes through. Your Wind Ranger bailing out what looked like a terrible fight for them. Still a Ravage yeah. commitment, a two for two. And very lucky Viper didn't And they mana. didn't have mech mana. <laughs> yeah. Viper was like, um, on strength treads, gave up his HP to go in treads and was still like 10 mana short for the mech. If he had mech, I don't think MVP get a single kill there. Instead, they get one kill and then the TPing and Ember Spirit gives them a second. But if Viper just mechs up, that goes horribly wrong for MVP. So, I mean, you can call it lucky. You can call it maybe just recognizing that Viper didn't have mana, so they kept chasing. But... Either way, MVP still only break even at best. Well, in good news, IG does not push that hard. Aside from having the mech. They, they go late game hard, though. They so. do go late game. <laughs> Pressure is definitely an MVP, but at least if they lose a fight, they're not immediately giving up objectives like some other lines yeah. might. That said, like, what is the what is the engine here for, for turning this game? They have no blink on Tide anywhere in sight. 1,800 gold short. Drow could maybe look towards Roche, but triple Wraith Band treads, that's it. 
No yeah. Mask of Madness, no no anything beyond that. You don't have too many levels on your supports. Like, what is your plan here if you're MVP? QO win range has to be in every single fight that happens, has to be ganking, has to be doing so much this game. There's a lot of pressure on him to come up big. Wow, Heen is so ballsy. They got a finger of death. What are you doing, my man? Don't Get it. zapped. No, don't. No. Not even. Come, come on, right zap him, him, dude. DD. Zap him. He's going to zap QO potentially. The mana for it. Don't you guys. stick around. Finger to the face. That's what you get for messing with Papa Chuan. First oh finger of death of 2015. There we go. <laughs> a lot of firsts here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Most of them on IG side, unfortunately, for MVP. They're on enemy turf. They're not in a comfortable situation. They're just getting pounded by Invictus Gaming. Tier 1 will fall as well. Ryzen moseying through the trees. Looks like he'll go for a Midas now on the CM, but it does not feel like a, a Midas mm. CM game in the sense that like you can turn it around. It, it doesn't feel like a second pick CM game at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time, like MVP have always been very kind of like they, they stick to what they do. They, they that's how, kind of how they rose, I think, in the Korean scene was just picking what they're comfortable with and what they kind of drafting to their own distinctive playstyle, but. Here is like CM and not kind of known for being like a top tier support. Yeah, CM Ogre, you see that? Like, you just want to gank like crazy. But you're up against a Medusa mid. Very defensive, tanky hero by nature. A Viper safe lane. And I mean, even if you do gank that, you're giving away a lot of farm to the Ember in the off lane. It's just kind of an awkward CM Ogre game in general. Well, cool. MVP can do it. Looks like they're going to lose their T1 mid talent now. Ferrari just happy to. Get that an eye range, so they're gonna to commit to this or it's gonna to get tonight. I guess I just don't care that much if it gets tonight. This bug, he's got the ultimate! Is he gonna turn? Oh. He gets well, kind of a terrible chain frost. But anyway, they get the wind ranger kill. They look for Horizon. They'll work through the tree line here. He's got two more tangos. He turns for the ultimate. That ain't gonna work. He could have tried to triple tango through, but it's pretty expensive. Meanwhile, to do that. Tide gets solo killed by Ember Spirit bottom. I don't know what June's Dyer's doing, but he's doing something right. Attack. It's a sad day for MVP fans everywhere. They're getting yeah. run over right now. Tier 1 mid will fall as well. And then you look at the farm distribution. It's not like they're really winning there. It's a 7,500 gold lead for IG. A 6,000 experience lead. A lineup that goes later. A lineup that has at least as much team fight, if not more. Can March turn it? He gets impaled. He gets nuked by the lift once. Down he goes. That's not good enough. He'll fall as well. Heen. Ryzen on the back foot. They do have an ultimate here from their Tidehunter, but no blink. He's got to walk in the hard way. They'll get a single kill on Chizbook. They look for more, but 430 easily TPs out. He's so farmed on this Medusa. But they're already five manning. Yeah. It, well, trying to. Drow died, so four manning now. But Medusa just with the point booster was super tanky. This rush point booster build on Medusa seemed really good. I'm, I think it's something we're going to see more from Medusa players. Like the uh, Sila's been doing it for a while now in his, and like some other teams picking up. And I think it's something which is it's such a value oh, item. Man. Because you want to go for this guy regardless, and it's a great first item. Twana's finger in one second's time! Come on, give him the zap, my friend! Not going to do it just yet. He's Ravage is barely going to clip on Twan. Maybe they can turn this to finger. The zap, no, he gets fogged. He can't do it. Now they turn up. Well, someone's going to get it. Maybe. Shackle on two. Nice play here from QO. Before 30 comes in, he'll zone for Ev off. He'll end up going down. Twan very patient with this finger of death. It has a very long cooldown at level number one. And they only get the one kill, but it's a, it's a no investment kind of kill. Very easy ancient steel. Uh, well, maybe. It takes him some time if he wants to go for this, so he may just give up, get some wards. They already have the wards down scouting the ancients, so. Easy ward. Just already dropping wards behind the tier 2 tower mid. Oh god. That's and they're running <laughs> they're running an Ember Medusa lineup. Well, like, that's geez. a game winning ward. If they get it off, which they do. No contest there. Casual chain cross lobbed in. Heen's gonna take the brunt of it. He ends up falling. And Luo turns on the rise and he wants both, but. He's been off a little more than he can shoot. Won't get either kill. Now the turn for up. No ultimate, though. They can engage on this, perhaps. The shackle connects on two, but no follow-up from there. June taking a lot of damage. He drops the remnant. He may go down, but he could buy back. Remnant back into the fight and try to turn it. March will fall as well. Does he have the buyback gold? He's not using it. Guess he doesn't need it. As QO retreats again to high ground. At the same time, Ryzen up on the high ground. And they will all just chill. Relax. Still... They actually did end up dropping the finger of death. First game of the new year, looking to be uh, fairly a fairly one-sided one. Yeah. <laughs> IG just doing everything right. And uh, well, listen, it's not Chinese New Year yet. They're not even celebrating. Yeah. They're, they're just they're busy, focused, 
you know, just trying to win Dota games here. I think showing that, like, playing ECL, like, a lot of the teams in China were kind of taking ECL pretty casually. It's a pretty small prize pool. It's kind of a fun tournament where, like, their audio, they're bantering a lot. Their audio is being broadcast to the on the stream and stuff. But the drafting and just the general strategy is being moved on to iLeague, which is a much bigger event for these teams. Yeah, and again, this is only a, an appetizer. It's a it's a pretty big prize pool, but for a lot of these teams, they look at it, they know that the Dota 2 Asian Championships are going to be like the real m the main course of this time of the year, right yeah. before the Chinese New Year, and then they'll go into a bit of a break. So for now, they're all focused. They're getting set up to go on forever bottom lane. Chuan finagling around, ready to engage. There's no ultimate for forever for some time. No finger though. Without that, that's hard to go in. I don't know if they wrote down the. The Ravage Timer is 4.30 again, bullies everyone off of the fight. The casual Stone Gazes just ending the opportunities for MVP. They try to re-engage, they smoke to get back into this one, and then another beautiful Shackle, QO delivering at least, but in the end it's only okay. a Viper kill. Is it good enough? Not so sure. It's not good enough, but it's, it's He's had better some, than nothing. See, that's my issue with Windranger right now. Like You get amazing Shackle after Shackle, and then what? Like yeah. It feels like... It only works if like the rest of the team is strong, and and then a lot of things could work. But you know, maybe we just haven't seen Wind Ranger use quite. Their other lanes did lose out pretty hard, I'd say. I, okay, I guess the Lich Ember didn't do that much at the top lane, but Viper pushing the T1 tower as early as he did allowed him to rotate off the map so fast. And this Roshan, uh oh, trouble's coming. Oh, he dodged. Oh no, he did. Got caught by the Ravage in the end. Then silence. He kills off for him. June dropping low here though. He's gonna remnant forward slight again as Chuan comes through. Gets the kill though. Roche denied. Three down wow. looking for more. Blake forward. They've got an impale. Can he hit it? He will! And then June charges in again. They managed to catch him out with the searing chains, the slaps, the punch. And down he goes. It's four dead. It's an easy A just going the way of 430. Yeah. This 16 minute Scotty is just. And the Western crazy. New Year looks like it may begin with Chinese dominance. <laughs> Well, IG, and, uh, really good to see. June takes the Aegis, he's got 2700 gold with a phase drums already, and he doesn't even have to get carry items. He's in like that kind of tempo controlled position, you've got the Medusa, you've got Viper, and all three of IG's cores topping the net worth charts right now. Gold lead now, around 12,000, the experience about the same department. It it wouldn't necessarily be overwhelming depending on the draft, but when you look at the kind of heroes they have, a Crystal Maiden, a Tidehunter who probably is their second best late game hero in theory is nowhere near any kind of item progression. Still trying to complete the mech that we were looking at from like four or five minutes ago. Let alone a Blake, Refresher, Shivas, anything like that. The Drow Ranger, Mask of Madness now going back for what looks to be a Yasha. It's it's a pretty depressing sight yeah. if you're an MVP Phoenix fan. And mech is not like a timing item. It's not like you get the mech and suddenly you can make a play happen. You get the blink on Tide and you can... Take a team fight, catch your opponents by surprise, and get that good blink ravage initiation to win a fight off it. Chuan. But Mech doesn't do the same. Thing. Again, it's the Chuan initiations. He steals Mana back to full. He still holds onto his finger of death. This lion pick is just out of control right now. Now they catch QO. He could blink finger in just a moment. He's not going to yet. Chain Frost comes through. He's going to hold. He wanted to go for the double impale if the Wind Ranger walked back in. But not going to get the double, just the single. Now chases forward, looking for QO. Down and zapped he goes as they continue to herd march towards the well. Get out of here. Guys, you got GG Tau bottom. No, no, they got frags, dude. They're at the fountain when there's tier two. But up. they're all alive. They're all full. Yeah, no, they're with fine. With ice armor, it's with mag. GG. Invictus yeah. Gaming truck through MVP in game one of this best of three. That was brutal. That was, that was okay. like. That was just painful to watch. Absolutely yeah. brutal beatdown. I mean, some of it, I think it was partially the drop, but I think I, IG just kind of outclass them this game. And MVP can play better. I don't think they're, as far as individual skills go, I think they can match up to IG. So I don't think it's like, okay, they got they got stomped and they're out of this. They just can't beat IG. I think that was just a bad game for them. All right. Well, with that said, guys, this is a best of three. Of course, I'm LD. I was joined here by Gods. You can follow him on Twitter at BTS Gods. Myself at LD Dota. David, any closing thoughts? What a what a MVP need to do differently going into game number Ooh. two, or do you just say just bad draft? We'll do it better next. I time. mean, I don't think it was just the draft, but the draft definitely left something t to. I don't know. <laughs> Stone second pick, Crystal Maiden. Dro Ranger is kind of like that. You need to draft around the Dro Ranger a bit more. Like the Dro definitely benefits the Wind Ranger mid, but I don't think you can beat IG 
MVP have kind of done well pl putting QO on these like snowballing heroes like his Slark or his Wind Ranger mid, his TA mid, but I think you have to play a much more well-rounded team game and I think going back to like their Warlock, Jakiro type strategies maybe is a bit better, but Draft needs to improve and just go for something a bit safer maybe. 19 minute GG, uh, one of the shorter games I've personally cast kind of harkens me back a bit to TI2 when IG I think it was like a 15 minute GG versus Navi in their prime, but with that said, MVP, they'll look to bounce back here. Game 2 coming up next, this is a best of 3, not an elimination match. And with that said, we'll take a quick break, we shall return with more Dota action. You're watching Beyond the Summit, Happy New Year's guys, stay tuned.